Hi, boys and girls. Our next book of the day is a mentor text, and it is titled Crab Moon, and it's written by Ruth Horwitz. So remember, a mentor text is something that the author demonstrates something in his or her writing, and we study those skills and that craft to then use in our writing in our personal narratives. Crab Moon. The summer Daniel turned seven, his family rented a cottage at the beach. They arrived on the weekend of the full moon. The full moon in June brings the high tide of the horseshoe crab, said his mother. I saw them laying their eggs on this beach when I was your age. Does it still happen? Daniel asked. Every summer, his mother answered. Horseshoe crabs have been coming ashore for hundreds of millions of years. They're older than the dinosaurs. Can I see them? Daniel asked. You'll have to get up in the middle of the night. I'll come and wake you, she promised. That night, the fat round face of the moon wavered on the surface of the water. The path felt cool under Daniel's feet. As the beam of their flashlight swept the beach, he drew a sharp breath. Think of a time that you kind of just, oh, something took you by such sudden shock and almost like surprised but impressed, amazed. Everywhere they looked, Horseshoe crabs, look at them all, boys and girls, crowded and pushed like restless cobblestones under the sandy shuffle of the surf. He could hear the clack, clack of the crabs, shielded backs bumping and scraping together. Use your senses on that. I mean, wow, look at that beautiful sky. But the I bet you it felt really loud. Look how many crabs there are. It's exciting, probably a little bit scary at the same time, but man, you hear the waves, probably that cool air. This writer does a great job at making us use our all our senses while we're reading the story and being a part of what they do. Daniel's feet near Daniel's feet. A large crab dug in the sand. That's a female, his mother said. The smaller crab on her back, it's a male. She laid her eggs in that hole and now she's pulling him across so he can fertilize them. They watched as the female crab swung herself around. Still carrying her mate, she made her way back to the water. Nature. Pretty incredible stuff. But man, imagine the sound and the colors. Probably the salty air has a little bit of taste. Little by little, the tide receded. The crabs returned to the sea. And Daniel's feet sank into the sand as he and his mother climbed back up to the bed. Back up to bed. There they go. Look at them all. No, don't go. Probably a text to world connection here is it makes me think of turtles. Turtles kind of do the same thing. They come and bury their 
eggs in the sand and then off they go. In the morning, Daniel raced back to the beach. The tide was low now. The, cr the tide was low now. The crabs were gone. Curly black seaweed was strewn on the sand like streamers left after from a party. Hmm. Imagine yourself standing on that beach. Sand on your feet. The breeze. Smell the water. Then Daniel saw one last lonely crab marooned upside down. She looked dead and dry. She, he found a piece of driftwood and gently nudged her. One leg moved. The other crabs had stretched their tracks in the sand where they had swung themselves around and gone home. How could this crab follow unless someone turned her over? That is so kind. Daniel reached out one nervous finger. The tail felt stiff, but not sharp. He carefully lifted the crab. As her body left the ground, her claws started to snap. Daniel put her head down, put her down fast. I better read that part again, sorry. As her body left the ground, her claws started to snap. Daniel put her down fast. Then he took a deep breath and reached for her again. This time he quickly turned the crab over and gently set her down. And Daniel grinned. That took some courage, didn't it? We don't always like to touch things in wildlife that might pinch us or sting us. or So he found a way to help her. I love that. Barnacles and slipper shells covered the crab's back like jewels on a crown. Notice them? The little barnacles. She set off down the beach, pausing and pulling her shell through the sand, quiet as a queen. What a special moment. Slowly and gradually, the crab pulled herself forward, stepping and pausing. Daniel's feet felt their way into the bay. He followed until she disappeared. Then he gave the water one last long look and whispered to his horseshoe crab, See you next summer. About horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crabs have lived virtually unchanged for more than 350 million years. They are not really crabs at all. Their scientific name is Limus polympus, and their closest living relatives are scorpions. Scorpions, spiders, and other joint-legged animals called Arth arthropods. Horseshoe crabs hard shells protect their soft undersides from predators. Their long pointed tails help them steer as they move over sand and through water. Their six pairs of claws are useful for grabbing the sea worms and mollusks they eat. Each spring horseshoe crabs begin their long journey over miles of ocean floor toward the sheltered beaches where they spawn. They may be found from Maine to Mexico. The largest horseshoe crab crowds gather 
at Delaware Bay. Unfortunately, horseshoe crab populations are plummeting as their spawning grounds are being destroyed as they are killed for use as bait. Not surprisingly, the numbers of shorebirds who depend on horseshoe, horseshoe crab eggs have also declined dramatically. wonder what we could do to help them. And boys and girls, that was Crab Moon. Mentor text written by Ruth Horwitz.